What's up guys, Quezzy or Noah here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create these displaced effects in Cinema 4D. Now you can do these with any object or text and here are a few examples that we're going to be covering today. Now we're only going to be covering a few of them but the general idea is the same throughout. Um, and you can see here, here's the text setup. Um, by the way, I am using new materials and a new Lightroom. I've just come out with my new Light Studio, as well as my Materials Pack V7. Um, so if you're interested in using the same materials and Lightroom as I will be using, links to those will be in the description down below. Or you can use your own Lightroom and materials or any other Lightroom and materials. It doesn't much matter, but let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're going to create a sphere displace model first. So let's go ahead and get a sphere. Um, I'm going to bump the radius up to 50 and then double the segments to 32. And um, you want a decent amount of segments. So if I go and turn the lines on, you can see that's a pretty good amount. You could even do more if you'd like. Um, the more you have, the more detail you can get, but we'll also be adding a subdivision surface anyway, so it won't matter too much. Um, speaking of which, we're going to go ahead and get that now, subdivision surface, and pop that in. Um, and you can uncheck it for now. On that subdivision surface, press um, Alt-G or right-click and group and create a null with those. Then we're going to go ahead and get our displacer, pop it onto the sphere. And we're gonna go ahead and mess with some of the settings. Um, so by the way, I'm in inches instead of centimeters. Um, so if you go to preferences, you can go to units and go to inches. Um, I did everything in inches and that's what I have written down um, or else I would switch it to centimeters, but um, yeah. Um, and we're gonna go to shading here on the displacer, go to the drop down arrow and go to noise and then click on the little thumbnail. Um, come over to global scale and instead of 100 we're going to make that 500. And um, this is when we can start like messing with a lot of these options. So if you come to noise you'll see there's a bunch of different options for noise. Um, so the one sphere I did I went with box and then you can see right here it says relative scale. I made that middle one 1000. And you'll notice you don't really see much here yet. But if you scroll down and come to contrast and bump that all the way up, you'll see now it's basically just black and white. So things will either go, so things will either protrude from the sphere or go in. And now you can see this really affects our sphere. Um, and if I give this a quick render, you'll see we just have a pretty distorted sphere. There you go. And that looks pretty wicked and we're going to go ahead and check the subdivision surface now and we're going to click on that bump the editor to three and the renderer to three um, that might slow down your render time too so you can just do two or whatever you want it's up to you really now we're going to go back to the displacers and add in a smoothing pop that into the null and you could mess with some of these settings here as well, but we are going to do one more thing first. Um, we're going to come to the subdivision and you can press command C, command V to copy it or press command click and drag it and that will duplicate it as well. Click the displacer, um, click the little thumbnail again and switch black and white. So click on black, make it white and then click on the white, make it black. And this will inverse these so now if we add some materials so let's go to the one subdivision and i'm going to add this um, light box material that's orange and yellow and then i'm going to add this stainless uh, material so this is called stainless dk and this is called light box if you have my materials and if we render this out you can kind of see what we're working with um, but you can see the really cool effect of this by contrasting the displacers like reversing them i think it looks really nice um, but if we go to the smoothing now you can mess with a couple of these settings so if i go to iterations and maybe make that two you'll see these um, get a little bigger if that makes sense and if we go to like say 50 it gets more smooth it kind of rounds it off 
Um, so it really depends what you're doing. So like something like two, I kind of like in certain instances. I think it looks good here. Um, but I also think 50 looks good. So it's really up to you. You can bump up the stiffness as well. Um, but in my doing this, it didn't make too much of a difference. Now, if you want to make changes to the displacer, all you have to do is click on one displacer, press command and click on the other, open up the settings, and then you can mess with these to get different looks and it should apply to both of them. Um, so one of the things you can do is come over here to cycles and maybe make that two and that will mix things up. And you can mess with some of the other settings. Um, so this box one doesn't look too good with the cycles, but if you do like Voronoi 3, that's one that looks pretty interesting. Maybe we go to the spheres, rotate them, and like that view looks pretty nice. Also, you can do this thing where instead of the displacer on the sphere, you could drag it out and then put the sphere above it. Do the same with the other one. And now you can see that displacer has a different look. It looks a little more like our icon here. And that might look better or worse for you. Um, it, uh, it really depends, but also this way actually makes it easier for you to um, insert different objects. So say we didn't like the spheres, we delete them. And let's go ahead and add some Mo text. Let me pop into my camera and give this a rotate so we can actually kind of see this. Um, go to the text, let's go to middle, go to caps, and I'm going to go to my display and turn the, sh the lines on so we can kind of see this. Uh, I'm going to bump rounding up, we'll just go to two. And then down on caps types, we're going to go regular grid. Maybe, uh, maybe we bump the rounding down to one. Um, on regular grid, open up the size and bump it down. Maybe we just go one. Let's see, yeah, that might be good. That might be too much, we'll see. Also, go back to object and bump up the subdivisions. We'll go to four. And you can change the font. I'm gonna go ahead and do so. I use the font Danube. Here it is. And it's a nice rounded font and the rounded fonts look a lot better with this as opposed to just like kind of normal blocky fonts. Um, also, let's increase the depth a little. We'll just go to like 50. Actually, we'll just do 25. I forgot I'm in inches, so it's way bigger. Um, and then we can bump the subdivisions up to like eight. Okay, now let's flip back to normal shading, duplicate this, and add one into each subdivision. And there you go, you now get the same effect with the text. Um, now, text can look very janky with this. Um, so it really depends on the font you use and if you can get enough segments in there to make it look good. That's why we added the grid. Um, but the main aspect of this to play around with is the um, displacer um, type. So if we select both the displacers, come in here, you can see there is a ton of different options. And if you mess with different settings, you get a bunch of different variations. So Voronoi 1, you get like actual um, circle looks. And also with this text, I'm gonna select both the subdivisions and bump these down to two, just so it goes a little faster, but it'll look a little clunky. Maybe, okay, the smoothing's at two, that should be fine. Um, but there we go. Like we get some really sweet looking circle text right there and I'm gonna give you guys a render of this one um, but I'm gonna actually switch out these materials I'm gonna use this Star Wars material I have um, it's actually called Star like Star Wars Opera I think yeah cuz it reminds me of that scene where uh, Palpatine takes Anakin um, to the opera and that's where he gives him his um, that's where he gives him his speech about um, Darth Plagueis. By the way guys, as this renders, I just want to let you know you can get the Light Studio and materials on my Patreon as well. 
You will also get this Cinema 4D file that I'm working in right now, including all the models in there, as well as a PSD with the renders kind of enhanced a bit. And you can get that sort of thing for all my videos on my Patreon if you become a member. So if that interests you, go ahead and check it out. They also get videos early and things I work on, I just will post there and you get those files. So if that interests you, feel free to go ahead and check that out. Okay, this is rendering out, and you can see it looks a little funky. Um, it kind of has a balloon look to it, and that's just kind of the effect you get with text. I haven't fully worked that out on how to make it look good. Um, but I'm sure if you mess with the settings, you can get, get something interesting. Now, you notice that there's, like, there's no gap. Um, if we go to the smoothing, and we put this to, we'll just bump it to, like, 25. And once it updates, you'll see that gap gets bigger. Yeah, there you go. And I think it might look a little nicer that way. Um, that render took like five minutes though. I don't feel like sitting here for it. Um, but basically that is the tutorial guys. I hope you enjoyed. Um, also a big shout out to this guy, um, Perry Cooper 3D. Um, he's the one that like really fleshed out this whole idea and this concept. And it's where I got the idea for this video. Um, he did an animation with his uh, on the Taurus shape. Um, and I wanted to apply it to text and that's what I did here. Um, so big shout out to him. His channel will be linked in the description. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. If you want my Lightroom and materials, they're now on my store. You can also get them on my Patreon along with these, uh, along with this Cinema 4D file as well as the Photoshop files. So you get all the ones that I showed at the beginning, plus some others. If I create more, they will also be there. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Follow me on Twitter, subscribe for more tutorials. Be sure to leave a like. Maybe at 100 likes, I dropped this in before you file for free, so you, you never know. But follow me on Twitter at Quezzy. Check out my Instagram at That's Quezzy. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.